Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of In the Dark. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. That opening was kind of wild because I wasn't sure, like, because Josiah being gone, I was like, would anyone come looking for his wife? Like, I guess family would, not unless Josiah let... Well, I mean, who knows if, like, her side of the family's still alive or anything, but I'm like, who would be able to come there to discover the body or something like that? It's like, well, it turns out it's um, their, like, house cleaner. Uh, she ended up discovering the body, and now it's like, cool, Gene and them got this case. It's like, right, triple homicide connected to Mexican cartel, uh, but it turns out, obviously, I figured as much because home dude was alive, but we find out that the, the cartel dude that did survive, he did get away, but... Um, because he pulled the bullet out of himself, but he bled out and died. But he still got Leslie's gun. So it's only a matter of time until, like, he's probably on the side of the road. Someone's going to roll up, like, oh, my God, someone's dead. Call 911. It's just a matter of time because I'm sure he's out in the open. Not unless he's in a secure place, but, I, I mean, hell, someone found Josiah's wife's body. I mean, that's just because of the circumstances, but it's like someone's going to stumble across that cartel dude's body. And eventually, like, they're going to find Leslie's gun on him. Because their initial thought right now is that it's Trey, because they ended up finding out uh, the phone. I forgot, like, how did they uh, necessarily match that up? I forgot. Uh, but basically, like, Trey's phone is at the crime scene. Because basically it was a burner, but they ended up, like, knowing that it was to Leslie's place, which Leslie and Felix kind of repair their relationship to a certain extent. Because for her, it's like, all I've ever wanted, you're my brother and I love you. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, the thing I wanted to do, like, after dad died was get closer to you. But I think it's just their underlining issues got in the way. It's like, they're both of their stubbornness. Of like, they love each other, we're family, but also Felix is like, he always felt like, you know not good enough to be a part of this family. And I think his sister contributed to that without realizing it. It's just like, it's the thing probably like, it's probably that situation of like, she's not very good at probably like speaking her feelings when it comes to her brother. Well, the episode kind of proves that. So I think it's just the more she tries, like the worst it always came out. So they, rather than, you know, repairing the relationship, it always kind of fell apart. I mean, that's why they haven't spoken for like three years. So for her, it's like, please, I do love you, you know? I do care about you. He's like, if you really cared about me, you really love me, you let us stay here. And she's like, I, okay, you can. And he's like, wait, what? He was actually shocked because it's like, yeah, because despite everything, you are my brother and I would do whatever it is I can to protect you. Hell, even when Gene and Josh show up, which we'll get to that uh, in a bit, uh, she covered for them. She was a smooth liar. Um, I wonder what made her decide to get in front of because it looked like she has like a ring or something. It looked like that's what that was, one of those um, camera doorbells. It looked like that. it was that, but I, she was standing in front of it, which I thought was interesting. I, I was like, why did she do that? Uh, I guess to make any, if they're like watching it from the inside, maybe they'd be less nervous if they can't see. But also part of me is like, it's just interesting like why she chose to be there out of anything, you know? I, I don't know. It's just interest. Like, why not just stand in front of your door? I get like not walking them in, obviously, and not um, like standing there with the door open, like obviously. But is like, why specifically in front of what seemed to be? It's just her placement was weird. So I'm like, there's still some part of me that feels like Leslie's hiding something, and I just don't know what. Now, if it turns out she's connected to this just thing, I don't know. It just it feels like there's just something off there. It's just this weird feeling like she seems a little suspicious. Am I reaching? Am I like, am I going to probably end up being like fully wrong? It's just, it's just this gut feeling. I'm just like, there's something off there. I just can't place it. So, but she does cover for them. And, you know, Josh and uh, Jean do believe her. So that's kind of a dead end on that regard. Because it's like, she did tell the story. Like, oh, yeah, like, Felix came here with his friends and stuff like this. They came, they were here like the other day. I told him, no, I didn't want to get mixed up in what, you know, so... It, it actually worked out. Hell, even Murphy had to thank her at the end of it, being like, yeah, uh, thanks for help. Which, um, circling back really quickly with the whole Gene and Josh thing, which I'm like, 
if this was any other show, you'd be rooting for Gene and John. I, I don't know. I have to, I've talked about it before. It's that Breaking Bad thing of like, Walter White did some terrible stuff, but man, I'm I'm, I'm Team Wall all the way through. I, I was Team Wall all the way through. I, I know people can be on either side of that. I am, I'm, I'm curious how most people felt about it, but I was Team Wall all the way. Aside from all the really terrible, terrible things he did, I wanted him to get away with everything. So I'm kind of like that. I'm Team Murphy. I'm like, I want Murphy, Jess... Uh, Max and Felix to kind of get away from, like, find some way out of this situation. I don't know how the hell that's going to be possible. We'll see. But, like, I kind of want things to work out for them. So, but it's the thing of, like, if this was any other, like, if this was just a regular cop show and we were following Gene and Josh, I'm like, the bros, you know, this the squad, this the team. Because um, even Sarah's like, wait, you text him? Like, no, go to his house and talk to him, you know? And so he does. Josh hasn't really bathed. His entire life has kind of fallen apart. And Gene's like, right, I am going to help you get Murphy. So I owe you. He's like, yeah, we're friends and everything. And it's just like, yeah, that that's a buddy cop show all in its own right. So you'd be rooting for, I personally, I, I can't speak for the entire audience of this show, but me personally, I'd be rooting more for Gene and Josh if they were part of a different show. It's because the people they're after are people we've been following for now going into three seasons. So it's like, I, 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 these are characters, like I said, I want them to get away with everything, because I, they're good people, you know, some of them can be assholes, Murphy, um, oh, this episode definitely shows how much of an asshole she can be sometimes, but, you know, they're decent people caught in terrible situations and just fumbling their way through it, so, that's, that's the, you know, so, but if it wasn't for that association, if they were just random, it's like, nah, you'd be rooting for Josh and uh, Gene all the way. At least I would be, you know, so. But I just, I just think that's such an interesting interesting perspective that this show kind of creates within me. Like, it makes me see things kind of that way. But uh, regardless, Murphy still has it in her head that what just disappearing and everything has to be related to this whole Jennifer situation. That, you know, obviously it's like the uncle was arrested, but he was let go a couple of days ago. So, uh... Murphy wants to go visit him, even though Gene and Josh had just left. Even Sarah, uh, not Leslie, being like, shouldn't you at least wait for them to pull out the driveway? And so, but her and Felix go, and they talk to the uncle. Basically, he had just married um, Jennifer's aunt. Basically, her brother was supposed to pick her up or whatever, but he was kind of like into drugs and stuff. So, she ends up, uh, he ends up picking her up and dropping her off. And then when he comes back home later, cops are there saying he has something to do with her disappearance. Um, Felix being so nervous that he's doing the Rubik's Cube. I, I was kind of getting like a weird vibe from the uncle. I was like, I don't know, man. Something a little sinister about this. Um... But obviously, because especially when he tried to throw out the whole, I think she killed herself thing. I'm like, and that seems that seems mega suspicious because he's the one quickly throwing it out there. It's like, oh, you know, but Murphy's kind of like, well, what about this? He's like, because she's like, maybe she was scared, you know, of something at home. Maybe her brother was like, I don't know. I think she was depressed. Like he kept pushing that because he needed that narrative out there. So I'm like, he's probably most likely does have something to do with it. The cops are probably on the right track. They just never were able to find enough evidence to cooperate it. You know, maybe that is why she disappeared and everything. Maybe it was like, it could be a terrible. I was like, uh, I, I was thinking like, not unless it's something like a creepy, touchy uncle type of situation. Like, my, no, I hope, you know, it, I don't know if it was something like that. Um, I, I feel like, it, I mean, it could be, but I feel like it would be something sadly even worse than that for her to like disappear even you know like change her identity and stuff so who knows what it is that she's running from but they get the brother's address and so Murphy now wants to go talk to the mom to try and figure something out but then Felix kind of brings up something like right um if you're suggesting that it might be the brother or something it's like if it was the brother why would he take Jess? It's like, she's like, I don't know. She has, He hasn't seen her in like maybe 10 years or something. So he wouldn't recognize his sister. But Felix is like, that's not how that works, Murphy. Like, regardless how much time, you'll be able to know what your sibling looks like, especially after 10 years. They're not going to have changed that much. You won't even be able to recognize your own sibling. Because Murphy's coming from that perspective of like, well, because also I think it's, you know, a situation of she hasn't known anyone's faces for so long. She's also like, never had an actual sibling so you know that's such a foreign 
thing to her, but it's also like she's grasping at straws. Like even if her theory isn't hundred percent sound, she's still trying to grab on anything, anything that will lead her to Jess. But Felix does bring up a point like, why would he mistake his sis Jess for his sister? Because you know, or it could be like if that were the case, it could still fit with the narrative of he grabbed her because. Um, you might not be my sister, but you have her ID and her identity and you might know where she is. So I'm going to keep you, maybe torture you for information. Like maybe I, I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit, but I think Jess is still alive. It could easily be a torture situation where it's like, well, not unless, I was about to say, not unless this has, I don't think, I was, I was about to say, not unless this has something to do with the cartel. Cause I could see the cartel definitely, that be the interrogation tactics of like, torturing someone but i think that's what she's being pumped for information like i think jess is alive that's where my heart lies that doesn't mean it's a guarantee or anything but that's where i'm at i think she is alive and she's being like held captive because someone is like either it is someone that's holding her for different reasons too it could be that she um it could be that uh the or it could be like i said uh the person is like, holding her for information about you know the real jennifer because it's like right you have her identity so you must have some means of knowing who she who her new identity is um that's where my mind is. we'll have to wait and see but um so it could still fit into the narrative that you know uh murphy's created but it's also just a thing of right she's still just grasping at straws in general so felix is like no no we're not going to the mother's hard cut to them at the mother's place and so murphy kind of slips and drops the information of like right she had a fake id and the mom's like well i knew it i knew she wasn't you know sad or whatever she also says like she hasn't been in like do you know where your son is and she's like no i guess that uh lends itself to the whole fact is that he's a you know gotten mixed up in the drugs and i guess it's like he's kind of the outcast of the family so Murphy didn't really get to question her as much as she wanted to, but it is probably a thing of, like, why wasn't he potentially looked at as a suspect? Because he was the one that was supposed to pick her up, but the uncle's the one that picked her up instead. Part of me was also wondering, like, what if who they visited was... I was also thinking, like, what if... Because the moment when they were talking to you, I also started thinking, like, what if the guy that's pretending to be the uncle isn't the uncle? What if that's actually Jennifer's brother? That could also fit with why he's, like, so cagey about the whole situation so uh, i don't know because then if that is the case like say for example that was her brother or maybe it was her uncle like what if this is like jennifer's running because he committed a murder and she's a witness to it so like either say like oh it's say that's her brother and he killed their uncle and she was a witness to it so she's running or what if that was her uncle who killed her brother and she was a witness to it. Like, maybe of something of that nature. Especially considering the fact that we have... The mom doesn't even know where her son is. That's why I'm like... There's definitely something a little weird about all of that. So, I, I think there's breadcrumbs there that could potentially... We just don't know... Like, I'm, it's just pure guesses at this point. I feel like there are breadcrumbs to something. I'm just not sure what. Uh, but because... Circling back... But because Murphy got their mom, like, hopeful again, because it's like, right, no one's looking for my daughter, hasn't been looking for my daughter for the past, like, 10 years or whatever, which I thought was interesting. They never really gave an explanation other than, like, yeah, we're looking for her. I was like, you could have easily came up with a lie of, like, a plausible lie is like, right, we do a crime drama pot, we do a crime pot, a true crime podcast, and we're, you know, maybe that's why they're not questioning it too much, because that is a real thing that, you know, um... In, in this world and everything so like i'm surprised they didn't lean into that narrative but i guess it's like right we don't need to like because i just i thought that would have added it's not like it makes it doesn't make you any more or less credible i guess in the grand scheme of things than if you're just a random person saying like oh i want to look into this uh I, I feel like it would just add a, i mean i guess it could add like a little more validity to like oh understanding like why these random people are looking into this but i guess it's like as long as you're looking into it, I'm sure, like, the mom's like, I don't care as long as someone's looking into it, because the cops sure as hell aren't, so. But it turns out that the uh, detective who was, or the person that was working on his, um, her daughter's case is obviously from the same precinct, so, like, he's in the know about the whole Murphy thing. So the moment, like, Murphy's asking all these questions about Jennifer, that's when they start connecting all the dots, being like, wait, if it's about Jennifer, then it could be, that's what this is about, uh... Because Darnell went to visit Jennifer in the hospital. So it's like, right. Je they're like piecing it together. Like, right. Jennifer, uh, Jennifer is Jess. And so uh, Murphy's looking for Jennifer, hoping that maybe it has something to do with 
uh, what happened to uh, Jess. And so for them, they're going to be investigating that. So Sarah, it goes to visit Darnell, which they have the connected history of like, right. They met once at Jules funeral, but they, uh, they talk about, and I thought, I was like, I'm surprised. And I think that kind of fits with the story too. Like they cut away from all the questioning about Jess and stuff like that. All you hear is them like laughing and joking about, you know, the person that they both care about that's now gone. And then, like, like the moment they're leaving everything, I was like, this is a little weird. Because at first, I was thinking it was going to be kind of a Sarah and Jean thing. That's what I was kind of expecting. But then, like, Darnell and her get there, which I'm immediately like, wow, really, Darnell? Another cop? Okay. I mean, hey. It's almost... It, you Funny enough, you'd be like, man, you kind of got a type, don't you? you? You like women that are on the, like, opposite side of you. I mean, granted, you're you're out of that criminal life. I mean, you're still kind of mixed up in it regardless just because of everything that's going down. But it's just funny that, uh, and it's not, it didn't stop some kisses. They banged it out. And then Gene calls and over the phone, because obviously they're looking for Trey because they think he's associated with those murders, which immediately Darnell's like, no, my boy Trey, that ain't him. I would know. And he bails. And Sarah kind of like, Damn, I screwed a pooch on this. Very, you know, there's a parallel you can draw with, like, Jules in that same regard. So he tries to warn Trey. He's like, yeah, I got to help my boy. No one will ever know you're the reason why I get, I get this. So she's staking out Trey's place, you know, trying to, like, damn, I kind of screwed the pooch on this. So uh, that that's, uh, that's going to be a complicated, nasty situation of, like, oh, yeah. Uh, but Trey wasn't one responsible. He was there, though. Um, so I'm curious what Trey's going to do now. It's like... Uh, Cause he, there was a whole conversation with him and Murphy about like trying to have a normal life, which she was like, I don't think either one of us like is normal, but she's like, he's like, we could give it a try. And she's like, sure. And he's like, sure. So, uh, he's even trying to get a, a job from his buddy at like a regular place. It's like, it's like, um, cause that his buddy's like got like a family member or something or something that like has a job. And it's like, Oh, he's Trey's like, Oh, fine. I'll take the dishwashing job just to be normal. But it's like, right. Ain't no escaping this life. Once you're kind of neck deep in it like this. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. Um, so there's all of that. So Trey's kind of on the run and Darnell's helping him on the run. I wonder, will it eventually, cause now Trey's got to know, like, right. My phone was there. Now it also knows that the cops are there. So it's like, right. That gun was left at the crime scene. You're not going to give, uh, Felix, Leslie or Max the heads up about that. I don't know. But, um, obviously after the whole situation with the, um, Jennifer's mom, you have Murphy back at, um, Leslie's place and, the Jess inside of her head is there being like, right, you want to hold on to me. Like, you don't want me to really go away because at the end of the day, this might be the only version of me that you will ever see for the rest of your life. And it's just like, Murphy's like, no, she doesn't want to fake Jess. She wants the real Jess. And it's like, but the moment she's like, go away, it's like, she does. And it's like, even later on, she's like, Jess, please come back. And so Max and Felix talk about the Jess situation because both of them are on the impression that she's dead. Now, everything related to Max and Felix are, is circumstantial. Now, Murphy, they got her dead to rights. So they need to get her out of the country. They, they, neither one of them wants her to locked up and spend the rest of her life in jail. Because at the end of the day, they both do care about her. So they come up with a lie to convince her. Like, right, we got this lead and try to get her into Canada. And so Felix, feeling, you know, he does care about Murphy. So he ends up lying to her and it's like right let's go and they end up sneaking off to the Canadian like he's taking her to the Canadian border which interestingly enough like before they left Max hugged her and he's like yeah just take care of yourself it's like regardless of anything he didn't feel right about it but it meant taking care of Murphy it meant that she, you know he still does care about her it's not like no matter how much she wants to like fight it it's still there um so I, just, I thought that was really sweet in its own right. And I get, like, it sucks that they did that. They had no right to do that. But for them, it's like, no, like, Murphy will never accept the fact is that Jess will be dead. Like, they've kind of accepted it after at this point. So they've had the, like, that's a harsh reality because it's just like, they think Murphy's just grasping at straws. Like I said, I think she is. But I, the, just because she's desperate and grasping, grasping for straws doesn't mean that there isn't smoke um, that there isn't fire where there's a little bit of smoke. Is I, I kind of butchered the whole metaphor I was trying to go over here. Um, but it's like, I think there is something there, whether or not she's just grasping at straws. But um, obviously when Felix 
you know, tries to trick her, like, oh, we be, you know, there's cops here, so you're going to have to get in a trunk. Random dude passing by, I was like, oh, I wonder what that's going to be about. Oh, cool. Passerby ends up dropping, ruining the whole ruse that Felix is going on, and Murphy's upset with him. It was actually a really interesting and touching moment where she was, like, vulnerable, like, saying, like, no matter how much of a dick you are to me and everyone, like, the fact is, you never treated me differently just because I was blind. You treated, like, you mean you had our relationship, but you never, like, you never had kid gloves on. Like, you never treated me, like, you never tried to be nice to me on purpose because I was blind. Because you Like, it, it was a situation of, like, right, you didn't pity me, you know? So, and now it's, like, how worthless and useless it makes me feel that you used, that you knew I wouldn't be able to see what we, so you used my blindness against me, and that's never been a thing. Like, you tricked me, especially when it comes about something this important to me. But Felix drops it, being like, right, like, I think, you know, um, Jess is dead. It's just like, I want you to get to Canada so you can be okay, you know? And then she, he hugs her. And then she says the line she shouldn't have said. And she's like, what? You thought we'd go to Canada and I'd fall in love with you? And I was thinking, like, Felix is going to have some wisecrack to be like, uh, no. But then she starts laughing. I was like, oh. I was like, not the response, I'm sure. He, like, I thought she'd be like, ha Oh, wait. Were you hoping for that? Because I thought he was going to drop the bomb on her being like, I care about you. I love you, Murphy. I thought that was going to happen. She'd be like, wait. What? It's like, yeah, like, I really recently figured out, like, I have feelings for you. Like, I thought that's what was going to happen. Instead, she burned that bridge by being like, you're I'm, you're pathetic. I'm sorry I slept with you that one time because Max wasn't around. And in that moment, I was initially like, okay, she's saying that on purpose because she wants to piss Felix off so he'll walk away. And then her expression changes to like, Felix. And it's like, oh, shit. And Felix just walks away, doesn't say anything, throws her bags out, drives off. She's like, Felix, now she's alone again because I get it. She was hurting because Felix betrayed her. She's looking for Jess. But in that moment, like she said something she shouldn't have said, because that's the thing. Murphy's really good at getting under people's skin. She knows just what to say to piss them off. Once again, I brought it up. Murphy can be an asshole. That has always been apparent. Like, she's always been sarcastic. She's always been a bit of an asshole. But in this moment, she went too far, especially for some dude who's, like, had her back the entire time. It's like, you know, it's like, I've all, like I've always gone along with everything. I've supported you. I've helped you. Even before the whole, like, us sleeping together thing. Like, I've always been there for you. And you say some shit like that. Because it also means, like, on some level, you know how I feel about you. And, you know, it kind of l- lends itself to kind of what Max had talked about. Like, Murphy manipulating people and stuff like that. And just, like, she's like, you can't leave me alone. And just screw me out. And just Felix bailed. I was like, dude. Uh, I, I, I think he'll eventually come back. But now, we're back to Murphy in episode three again. She's all alone. You know? And Felix ain't going to come back for her. Max, I don't, I don't know. Well, she's probably going to avoid talking to Max because, well, now it's like right, she doesn't have anyone now. All she has is because we saw, I call a glimpse of the preview. It's like all she has is the Jess inside her head. So I'm curious what those conversations are going to look like next episode. It's like right, you kind of have no one to blame but yourself because you shouldn't have said what you said and you, you know, um, and just she'll probably justify it by being like, yeah, Felix was a dick for doing what he did, you know. But it's like, ah, oh, man. Was it right that he did what he did? I was like, no, but that statement cut deep. And I feel so bad for Felix. Just in the moment that he just, he went silent and just like walked away. It's like, you pit like, you could have just, there could have been more conversations, but it's like, like I said, just in that moment, you could immediately tell when he went quiet, she immediately regretted. Maybe it's because on some level, she like, busts his balls and talks mad shit, but she never thought, like, what she said would cross a line, or maybe she immediately did, because, like, she was lo- kind of smiling and laughing and about it, but then, like, she immediately, like, I think it's because the moment he fell silent, she was like, oh, you're not calling me out, you're not doing, you're actually super quiet, like, scarily quiet, like, Felix, like, come on, like, because the thing is, she didn't even mean, go, I- I'm sorry, I didn't mean what I said, it's like, so, I think, maybe on, maybe it wasn't what I thought of, like, she knew on some level what would hurt, maybe she did, but, like, on some subconscious level, she re- realized it, and used the ammunition she knew that would hurt him the most, because she's hurt in this situation, 
But I think it's the thing of like, maybe she didn't really think about it. Like, oh, like, wait, Felix does have feelings for me. So me saying that was basically ripping out his heart and stepping on it. Once again, that Simpson thing of like, you can see the moment right here where his heart breaks. I'm butchering the quote, but it's like Bart showing Lisa that, like, you know, on TV. Like, it gets memed like crazy. So I think it's something of that nature. Um, you could just see the moment where Felix's heart breaks and he's just like, fuck you, Murphy. You know, and they're like, damn. So, that is going to be interesting to see uh, what happens now. Um, the, once again, we still got Gene, Josh, and all of them working on figuring out this whole Jennifer situation. That whether there's you know there's something to it, like Murphy believes, which like I said, I do believe. But and like I said, I do believe Jess is alive. But we'll, we'll have to see. Um, but other than that. There's also the Sarah and Darnell thing, what that's going to turn into. Trey, uh, there's uh, there's also, once again, that cartel member that has a gun. It's only a matter of time before the cops find that, and that's going to be tied back to Leslie. So we shall see how all of this plays out going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.